90% of the golf lessons that are given could be summed up into three basic concepts. How you set up to the golf ball, understanding how to control the club face, and understanding how to pivot. If you know these three things, you're going to cover the vast majority of golf lessons that you're going to get. I'm PJ Teaching Professional Todd Cope, Director of Instruction for US Golf TV and the Sanford Power Golf Academy. In over 25 years, I have literally given thousands and thousands of lessons and my guess is is if you're watching this video you've taken your fair share of lessons also and you know what today we're talking about the three concepts that if you understand these you're going to start playing better golf now hey be sure to subscribe to our channel do me a favor subscribe and tell your friends about us here at us golf tv i really feel like we're doing some great stuff and helping our fellow golfers play some great golf out there so be sure to subscribe and always be sure to leave a comment i literally respond to every single one of them because i love hearing from you because i can maybe learn some stuff from you so let's dive right into this we're going to talk about the setup we're going to talk about the club face control and we're going to talk about the pivot so first of all how we set up to the golf ball starts with how we grip the golf club so the first thing i want you to know is i'm going to demonstrate this from a right-handed golfer's perspective and i've just got my seven iron you could learn the grip with any club but for today's purposes i'm using my seven iron first tip i want to give you is that when you place your hands on the club bring the club up here at eye level so notice when i'm holding the club i'm holding it in my trail hand my right hand i've got it up here at eye level but also notice the angle that i have the club at now the reason this angles, I, I'd say it's maybe 45 degrees. Okay, if this was zero and this was 90, maybe it's halfway in between. The reason this is important because it places my hand in the accurate position, the correct position I should say, so that the club kind of runs diagonal. Notice how it's running diagonal. It's in, exiting right here through the middle of my index finger and it's resting on the top of my, or the pad is resting on the top of the hand like so. So when the club is angled at this position, that angles the club to run through the hand in the way that you want it to. Now, I'm also gonna make sure that my lead thumb is nice and snug, and it's actually what I call a little bit short. So this would be extended, and this would be a little bit shorter. So, first tip is, get the club up here at eye level, put it at a 45 degree angle, just take your hand and angle it like so, right? The visual there will tell you what you need, and then go ahead and close it around. Now, the trail hand, the right hand, basically works the same way. From this angle, I'm gonna go ahead also, and I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna hold it a little bit more maybe down to my fingers of my trail hand like so, all right? And my trail hand, my right hand, is going to cover my lead thumb, okay? Now underneath there, you've got a couple different things you can do. You can overlap it like so, you can interlock it. Both of those work quite well, it's kind of up to you. Or for some younger golfers, or maybe even some female golfers at times, they like to use a 10 finger grip. Either one of those works. So the first tip is on the grip, get the club up here at eye level, get it at that 45 degree angle, that's gonna help you out quite a bit. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about here is the setup position. Here's what you gotta know in the setup position. All right, basically you wanna be in a ready position. So from down the line, I've got my feet about shoulder width apart, I've got my toes flared out just slightly, I've got a little bit of a knee bend, and a little bit of tilt at the hip. All right, this gets me in a position so that I can swing the golf club and be athletic. Now a good checkpoint for you is pretty simple. When you're set in here, your hands, your fingertips, I should say, should just barely touch or just be outside your kneecap. So notice how my hands are falling right here. This tells me that I've got pretty good bend in my knees and also in my hips and can also help me get the proper distance away from the golf ball. So getting set up correctly it's not an overcomplicated thing as long as you understand those couple concepts. Toes are flared out a little bit, a little bit of knee bend, a little bit of hip bend so that your fingertips will just touch the front of your kneecaps. Now, two other things I want to tell you on the setup that are, I strongly believe in and has really helped a lot of my students. Number one is when you're set up, feel like to start you've got a little bit more weight or pressure on your lead foot. I'm going to talk about why that's important in a second. Okay, and number two is feel like your upper body is tilted back just a little bit. So notice how the buttons here, or the, the zipper on my, on my shirt here, tilts a little bit away from the target, and I've got a little bit of weight forward. When I can do those couple of things, that's gonna help me get in the position that I wanna get in for the setup. Now, why is it important to have a little bit of weight on the lead foot? Well, here's why. Because the weight on the lead foot allows you to what I call unweight and move into your trail side. So if I've got, let's say, 60% of my weight here, and I move that 60% to my trail foot, 
So now my trail foot's got maybe 80%. That movement from 60 to 80 is what I like to call the unweighting or it's kind of the trigger to get your golf swing going. If you start with all your weight on your trail foot, you don't have that little bit of bump or that little bit of movement to kind of initiate the movement of the golf swing. So those are the couple of tips that you want. If you know those basic concepts, you're gonna be set up in a pretty good position to hit a good golf shot. So the next thing we wanna talk about is controlling the club face because the club face combined with a couple other things has the biggest impact on the direction the golf ball starts and the curve of the golf ball. All right, so this is pretty simple. This is a great tip that I picked up a few years ago. You're just gonna take a golf tee and what you're gonna do is I got my foot joy glove on here. I'm just gonna put this tee right kind of in the opening right there. So notice how it's just kind of sticking out like so. Now I can use this as a reference point. So when I'm set up, I'm in this good position right here. All right, and the T right now is pointed towards the target. So from the front on view right here, all right, notice how the T is pointing towards the target. Okay, now when I return to impact, I'm gonna get ahead of myself, but I'm gonna return to that same spot. Notice how the T is pointing at the target. That tells me that my club face is square. If the T was pointing towards the sky, club face open, I'll go ahead and do it up here. T to the sky. Club face open. T at the target, square. T to the ground, closed. All right, so though if you understand those concepts, we can use that feel throughout the golf swing. So, I'm set up here, T's pointing at the target. When I take it away, the T now is pointing kind of down where the ball would be. Now I know my club face is square. And when I swing it to the top, the T is gonna point more towards the sky. And when I come back down, I'm gonna get that T point at the target. So this simple drill and referencing the T can really help you understand how you can control the club face. Most amateur golfers I see, if you slice the golf ball, this is for you. When they're set up, probably a pretty good position they're set up, but when they take the club away, they rotate the club this way, which opens it up. Notice that the T points towards the sky, bad position to be in if you're a slicer of the golf ball. Or maybe they're good here, but when they get to the top, the T's not pointing towards the sky, it's pointed over there at my golf bag, which gets the club face open as well. So if you're at home and you wanna work on your club face control, what you're gonna simply do, take the T, it's pointing at the target, down towards the ball, towards the sky, and then back towards the target. And that movement through there will help you understand how you can control the club face. So that's the second tip, the second lesson. We've covered setup, we've covered club face control. Let's talk about the pivot. The pivot is people talk about balance, swinging under control, having good rhythm, these types of things you hear a lot of. So what is the pivot in the golf swing? Well, the pivot we touched on a little bit already when we talked about having our weight a little forward, pushing towards the trail side and rotating. But your pivot is basically how you interact with the ground, okay? So if you're falling over or you're out of balance when you're swinging the club or you're out on your toes, you're, all, you're moving around a lot, you are not pivoting correctly. So in a good pivot, what we wanna see is we wanna see starting a little left, which we've talked about, okay, early in the backswing. Now I'm gonna give you a drill to just practice this so it becomes pretty natural in a second here. But you start a little left, you bump towards the right, see the little bump? Okay, so it's a bump and then it's a turn. All right, so you start here, little lead side, little left side, bump to the trail side, and then we turn. So my weight goes from my left foot to my right foot and then back towards my heel. So from down the line, start a little left, bump right, turn towards the heel. Okay, now in the downswing, I'm gonna kind of basically reverse that. So I'm on my right foot. Now I'm gonna work back towards my lead foot. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and finish with my knees touching. So we're moving from front side to trail side back to front side and finishing with all my weight on my lead side. So how do we practice that? How do we do that? Well, here's a couple great drills. The first one is very simple. It helps us understand staying relatively centered when we rotate. And that's just hitting balls with my feet together. So I take my setup, put my feet together, and just go ahead and swing my arms. Now when I do this, if I have too much movement towards toes or heels, you're gonna feel that right away. So feet together, and just feeling my arm swing. Now the side benefit to that is there's a lot of speed in the arms, okay? Don't be afraid to use your arms when you're swinging, especially senior golfers. You use your arm, there's a lot of speed there. So that'd be drill number one. Drill number two 
is a little bit of a modification of that. So, take your regular setup, take your lead foot, bring it back to your trail foot, okay? Back swing, and then step forward and strike the ball. So let me go ahead and demonstrate. Regular setup, lead foot back, back swing, and step forward. Now when I do that, what I'm doing there is I'm learning to transfer my weight from my trail foot to my lead foot. So when we talk about the pivot, we're talking about swinging the club and being in balance. I start left, I go right, I go back to the left. These couple of drills can help us do that. So the truth of the matter is, is, is that 90% of the golf lessons you, you take are either about your setup, they're about your club face, or they're about your pivot. And by understanding these three basic concepts and ways to practice them, you're only gonna need one lesson and hopefully it's just this lesson. So I hope those tips help you out. Next time you head to the golf course, you get some good understanding of what you wanna do and more importantly, you can start playing some better golf.